Oh, time for another look at a really awful sequel without looking at the first one. I mean, we've done Troll 2, Jack Frost 2, Tooth Fairy 2, uh, George of the Jungle 2, and now we're looking at Daddy Day Camp, aka Daddy Daycare 2. They're taking everything they've learned. The Daddy Daycare brand means a lot. Repurposing that brand into summer is just smart business. But you hate the outdoors. To a more natural setting. Camp did what? We were here when we were kids. We don't know how to run a camp. Yes, but we didn't know how to run a daycare center either. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Daddy Day Camp. Just like George of the Jungle 2, it's a very unnecessary sequel. A lot of the same faces don't return. Spurred by their wives' insistence that their children attend summer camp, daycare entrepreneurs Charlie and his friend Phil decide to buy their dilapidated alma mater, Camp Driftwood. The men face a near impossible task. Not only must they renovate the place, but they face stiff competition from nearby Camp Canola, which is run by Charlie's arch rival, Lance. Charlie asks his estranged father to help restoring Driftwood's former glory. So despite the fact this is supposed to be a direct sequel to the first one, nobody returns. The wives aren't the same, the fat buddy isn't the same, Steve Zahn isn't there, although they replace his character with someone else, and Cuba Gooding Jr. is supposed to be Eddie Murphy's character. And uh, I think the only reason that Eddie Murphy didn't take this role was because he was too busy doing Norbit. Which is sad because he had a cameo in Norbit, and uh... He also had to be in this. Sorry, Cuba Gooding Jr. So like I said, exact same characters. It picks up with them still doing Daddy Daycare, and they're reminiscing about the good old days when they were at camp, and how these kids these days, they have it good. They get to, you know, be on their electronics and their video games and all that kind of stuff. Meanwhile, we used to rough it in the woods. We did the uh, Camp Olympiad back then. Darn it, camp was so good. Come on, kids, we're gonna go do summer camp. And then we get the obvious joke of they drive past this really cool camp that has jet skis and paintball and lots of really cool shit. And then, of course, you see the camp that they're gonna be taking over for the movie, and it's this rundown shithole. It's going to be bought and torn down by the guy that beat Cuba Gooding Jr. in the Olympiad back then. Played by this guy who looks a lot like Gary Busey, and I'll tell you what, that guy was trying to pull some Gary Buseyisms all throughout this movie. Lots of screaming and mugging and overacting and flaunting of his teeth. Lots of Gary Buseyisms from this guy. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful! After the movie, I looked him up on IMDb, and it turns out there's two movies I recognize him from. He was the cop in Frey vs. Jason, and he was the guy with the tiny dick in Scary Movie 1. Then he went on to be the bad guy in Daddy Day Camp. <laughs> they buy the camp from the original owner, who's played by Brian Doyle Murray, and as soon as he gives them the camp, he packs his bags and takes off, because it's now their responsibility. And they go, we'll fix this place, and a sign comes down, the trailer gag. And you know what? As bad as this movie is, at least Brian Doyle Murray got a paycheck. We then get a fixing things montage with lots of Pratt Falls, and this is where we enter one of the movie's most glaring problems. This is one of those movies where they think that if everyone's just being goofy and mugging and acting stupid and just doing a bunch of stupid shit like Pratt Falls and fart jokes and people getting bonked on the head or falling over or a kick to the nuts, that automatically equates to it being funny. It's like that movie or TV show, An Idiocracy, where the only thing that's being played is just hours of people getting kicked in the nuts. A bunch of kids then come to the camp. They all have different wacky personalities. One kid's always vomiting. One kid's kind of an instigator. There's a fat kid who's kind of a bully, and he has this subplot that he's, he was afraid to come to camp because he would pee in his sleeping bag. And there's this one kind of nerdy kid who has the hots for this other girl in a romance that's very awkward in the same way that it was awkward in Flying Ryan. Like there's one part where he's trying to talk to the girl and he says that he's a player of World of Warcraft. And man, how is it that this movie from 2007 actually seems like it's kind of relevant because World of Warcraft, from what I heard, is coming back in a big way. Do you like World of Warcraft? World of what? Uh... I'm a level 40 blood elf druid. So yeah, these kids are supposed to be losers and misfits, what have you, and the rival camp are a bunch of dicks because they always go over, prank them, and steal their stuff, and just, just act like general assholes, all the while being led by Captain Kmart Gary Busey. And of course, it seems like everything that could go wrong happens, like, ho ho, wacky shenanigans, they establish when they first get to the camp that there's a methane problem, and 
uh, the, the fat guy goes into the latrine at one point, he, he farts, and then the, the whole outhouse explodes. I think we're gonna need more toilet paper. More property damage, more pratfalls, more goofy shenanigans. And then when Cuba Gooding Jr. is talking to his wife, she says, well, why don't you call up your dad? Maybe he can help. He's very reluctant to do that, but he ends up getting called up and Grandpa Buck is this like super military guy where literally everything he says is about combat, guerrilla warfare, war games. Like he, it's a, he's a super one note character. He's this over the top military guy and that's the character right then and there. Green enlisted reinforcements, war games, guerrilla warfare, hand to hand combat. So when Grandpa Buck sees that the rival camp are screwing them over, he goes, all right, we're gonna put together a very strong military plan. We're gonna have code names, camouflage. And you're like, oh, well, what's it gonna be? <laughs> There's nothing military about it. They just get a bunch of stuff like eggs and rotten fruit and throw it at them. <laughs> Mark Gary Busey goes over to taunt Cuba Gooding Jr. for being a loser back in the day. So then Cuba finally caves and goes, you know what? Our camp versus your camp. And if we win, then we get to keep our camp and you can't buy it and tear it down. So yeah, we get the rich asshole kids versus the good underdog misfits. We enter that cliche. That night they go out into the woods. They have a little bonfire, have some stories. Uh, Buck keeps going on about military stuff because he's just that much of a one note character. Uh, the sick kid vomits in one of the tents. And that part was weird because the sound effect they use for him vomiting sounds like something straight out of The Exorcist. No! <laughs> Cuba Gooding Jr.'s kid then gets lost in the woods, but they find him pretty easily. And Cuba then tells his son, you know, don't be like Grandpa Buck. I, I don't want you trying to be like him. Don't be like him at all. But ah, uh, Buck overheard that, so he leaves the next day, right before the big camp versus camp competition. And it's like, oh no, we're gonna we're gonna lose. We need him. And so Cuba goes down to the train station because conveniently they found his ticket in his cabin. They go down. Buck goes back to the competition to help them. And of course, like a lot of other movies that have done this, like Revenge of the Nerds, we have it that some kids win certain competitions, other kids win certain competitions, and you know that the underdog misfit kids are going to win. Also going back to the wacky shenanigans uh, with that kid who said that he was afraid to be sleeping in a sleeping bag because he would wet himself. Well, there's a punchline to that where they're doing a balloon toss and their way of getting back at the rival camp is he fills a balloon full of pee and it hits one of them. Ho ho! It all comes down to Kmart Gary Busey's kid versus Cuba Gooding Jr.'s kid and there's a part where the kid's supposed to run with a baton and they do the most forced, oh, is he gonna drop the baton? Oh no, like the kid's fumbling with it. And I'm just like, kid, it's a baton. It's not a lathered bar of soap. Stop fumbling around with it. Of course, the underdog kids win. Kmart Gary Busey feels bad and starts crying like a baby. And all the kids from the rival camp now want to go over to their camp. So hooray, they won. They can now fix up the camp and make it better. More people want to go to their camp. Hooray, they won. This movie sucks. If I had to compare this movie to another movie we did for Blockbuster Show, it's easily up there with the other bad sequels we've talked about. It's up there with George of the Jungle 2 and Tooth Fairy 2. Like, this honestly doesn't really feel like something that should have gone to theaters. Like, not in like a Oogie Loves or Norm of the North extent, but it is it is one of those movies where, why was this in theaters? Like, this could have easily gone straight to video. That's what it looked like every time I used to see it when we, were, when we worked at Blockbusters. Every time I saw it on the shelf, I'm like, oh, that's a straight to video movie. And then when I looked it up on IMDb, it was in theaters. Because even if you wanted to see this movie, you would be way more satisfied watching this at home on TV or on DVD than seeing it in a theater. So yeah, in conclusion, Daddy Day Camp, it's up there with other bad, unnecessary sequels we've talked about before, like Tooth Fairy 2 or George of the Jungle 2. It's, it's pretty bad, don't watch it. We've got one more video for this month, and in October we have three videos. One's gonna be several movies in one video kind of thing, and the other two are just gonna be straightforward, just one movie for each video. Uh, so look forward to those. Until then, I'm Adam Sykes, this was The Blockbuster Show, and we will see you guys in the next video.